There was a game that was so popular in the 18th century. It was called Skittles or Nine Pins. If you saw it today, you would think it would be a cross between, say, bowling, bocce ball, and lawn darts. By the time of the 18th century, this game was already hundreds of years old, and it was played by people of all classes, rich or poor alike. In my many years of historical research, I've seen this game in many, many paintings and historical documents. I want to play this game. This game has the typical pins, a ball, it even has a board for the pins to stand upon. Now it seems like it might be simple, you're just knocking down pins, but it's much more complicated than that. It's got a very interesting strategy and a complicated scoring method. In order to play this game, we'll need the equipment, which I'll have Brandon work on the pins and the ball. And the pins are about 14 inches long and conical in shape. There's one special pin, that's the king pin. It's a little bit longer and has a little knobby top to it. And then the ball. And in the paintings, the balls are all kinds of sizes. I'll just have Brandon make the biggest ball he can. And while he's working on that, I'm going to start digging into a book that's specific in the 18th century about the rules so we can figure out all that complexity. Based on the artwork that John has shown me, I've come up with the right size and dimensions for these pins for the Skittle game. I'm going to be using some tulip, also known as poplar here in this part of the country. It's a medium hardness, but also easy to work wood. And I'm going to take the bark off, then chop it down to close to the right shape, and then I'm gonna put it on the lathe here. And the lathe is how we're gonna get that finished product, and it'll give it a nice, perfectly round, cylindrical form. And that's exactly what they would have used. There's so many variations in the paintings that show this game being played. To get the right dimensions for it, we kind of have to do an average. I'm averaging about three inches in diameter at the base, and the cone would be about 12 inches tall. The kingpin, we're gonna add a couple inches just for that fancy little finial at the top. We have our finished pin. We need to make eight more of those. But the next step is the ball. We're gonna use tulip for the ball, and hopefully we're gonna get a four inch round ball. That's what we're aiming for, but just as big as we can. Now to do the ball, we need to get it into a cylinder first. And we have some mathematical equations to get it just perfect. And this is exactly how it would have been done hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Brandon did a wonderful job on the ball and the pins. I'm just excited to play this game. We spent a long time uh, researching the rules and there are a million rules today for nine pins. And in the 18th century, it was probably even worse. It seems like every locality had their own set of rules. There's a wonderful book written in 1773 about nine pins and studying it, you'd think it was calculus, uh, how complicated it was. But the author said, if the rules got too complicated, that no one would play it. So that you should basically make your own rules and you could slowly make them more complicated. So I'm gonna have Ryan go over the rules we're gonna play with today. Okay, so it's really pretty simple what we're doing today. You've got three different kinds of pins. The middle pin is the king pin. The ones on the corners are lords and the other ones are commoners. The scoring for these pins is that the king pin in the center is worth five points if you knock him over. On the corners, it's the lords. They're worth two points unless they're toppled over by the king and then they're worth three points. And then the commoners are worth one point unless it's toppled over by the king and then it's worth two points. So the maximum score you can get if you bowl a perfect king pin and he turns around and knocks all the pins over is 25 points. So we're gonna to play to 50 points. After all of that comes strategy, which is something that we're gonna to have to figure out as we go. Do you wanna lob the ball so it kind of goes over the out perimeter pins and hits the kingpin? Or do you wanna roll it so it hits the edge of the frame and gets a punch? I don't really know what's gonna happen. Well, I made the pin, so I guess I get to roll first. Let's see uh, what kind of score I can get. Ooh. Two, four, five. 
Brandon has five. Let me see if I can do better than that. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. That's two and five, seven, and then nine, ten. So I was trying to be precise, and uh, I think their strategy is just mow them over. So I think I'm going to follow that strategy and just mow them over. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because right. the kingpin knocked that one off. Just the common one. Yeah. Right? So, so that's 12. So I'm at 17. I'm going to hit this corner one and have it drive through. Whoa! Ooh. That was weird. Okay. So you got two, three, four. Okay, so John's at 15, 17. I'm still 10. I'm going to go with the same roll I had last time. Try to mow down these three. Oh! <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait, wait. That, that's a zero. Gutter ball. So Ryan's strategy is not one I want to follow, so <laughs> I think we're going to try something different. Okay. Three, Three, four. Five, six. Plus the five is 11. 11. This ball is light, and the pins are heavy enough that it deflects the ball, so you really have to have it moving through the pins. Kingpin didn't knock anything over. Nope. Eight, nine. 24. I'll tell you what went wrong last time, is I threw it too high and too straight through. I didn't even hit the board. I need to get the ball down further. <laughs> All right. I got four. All right. That's two. Yes. 12, 24, 36. What am I at? 14? 14. I'm at 14. All right, here we go. Okay, same roll as last time. I can't do that again. Four. Ooh. Ooh. 14. Yeah, that's 44. 44. Yeah. Brandon just got 14. If I can get 14 on this throw, I will win. <sighs> Kingpin knocked this one over. Yep. It's a score of 10. I'm only at 46. Unless he totally screws it up, he's going to win that next round. So the pressure's on. John's at 46. Four points to win. John, uh, Brandon is at 44. I'm at 18. So I got to do it right now. Oh, okay. 26. My score is 44, and we're playing to where we can't go over 50, so I have to hit six. If I go over, I stay at 44. So my strategy, this is what I'm gonna try, is to hit that kingpin and hit that side one without them touching each other. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> well, it was close. <laughs> my situation's even worse than Brandon's. I only need four points, so if I'm really careful, I'm going to hit at the corner and just try to hit a noble, which would be three. No, if the ball hits it, it's just two. What if I got all those three on this end? Would that be four points? Uh-uh. No, that'd be five. I don't think you can do it. I don't either. think I can do it. You're going to have to take another turn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. Duh! One over. So this is the end of round six. Because these guys have to be careful, it kind of leaves it wide open for me to catch up if I can roll it well. Oh gosh, I just missed that kingpin. It was perfect. It's the start of round seven. I'm still at 44 and I still can only get six. Two. Okay, I have 46 and 48. 36. I only need four points. I'm at 46, but John's at 48. And I think we both have the same strategy of just whittling away that corner pin. He might beat me to it. Whoa. One, two, That's three, five. four, five. Uh, 
I've got this, I need two points. All I need to do is hit a corner pin. Easy peasy. No! Oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> right here, if I get 14 points, I come from behind and I take the game. Oh. Four. So you're 40. Yep. Start of round nine. John's at 48 still. I'm still at 46. But Ryan's caught up to 40. And I think I need to just keep whittling away and uh, hope that, you know, they keep missing. Ooh. 48. All right, 48. Pressure's on. He's tied up with me. I need two points. Good job, John. Woo! Bravo. It's been very interesting to dig into the paintings, the history, reading the books of the time period about nine pins. It has been great fun to sort of step right into history and play the game of nine pins.